live from San Francisco. Extracting the signal from the noise, it's theCUBE. Covering VMworld 2015. Brought to you by VMware and its ecosystem sponsors. Hello, and my name is Edward Haletke. I'm with the Virtualization Practice, and I run the Virtualization and Cloud Security Podcast. Normally a video podcast done whenever we wanted to, actually, these days. And we're up to episode 160 or something like that. Mike's been on as long as I have, almost. Actually, his funny thing, Hema was one of the original podcast members. Hema Prafachandra. Yes, um, Hema Prafachandra. I'm the CTO of Hytris. And several other things. And several other things, <laughs> yes. And Simon Crosby's been on the podcast before. I have. Pleasure to be back. Founder and CTO of Chromium. And Mike Foley is my compatriot of recent years. Yep, Mike Foley. I work in vSphere Technical Marketing. I'm the author of the vSphere Hardening Guide. Yes. And you used to work at RSA and several other places that deal with security. Yeah. He's like we won't the, v to those. the vSphere <laughs> Security Guide. We love the Hardening Guide. Believe me, we really do. We do. I think we all have a tool for the Hardening Guide yes. at one point in time or another. Uh, group hug everybody. Simon yeah. doesn't need it though. <laughs> Simon's, I mean, his, his stuff doesn't need it though, right? Right, right. <laughs> it no. just does it for you. <laughs> no, just, you know, I'm all for it. Hardened server so stuff, good. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. just clients count too. Actually, yes. they, I think they count a little bit more. I mean, one of the things that came out of the keynote was putting security <clears throat> on an untrusted platform. I, I'm a little confused. I personally don't think that's possible. Can you secure, put security on top of an untrusted platform? So we've been doing that for years and years well, but and we, years. But we've it's been doing really it. It's a question of risk management. It's not a question of security. It's a question okay. of risk yeah. management. I mean, well, if you think about traditionally what we've been doing with firewall products, right? It was on hardware. Nobody actually said that the hardware was validated. So software has always been placed that provides security functions on hardware that may have come from a different vendor. So, you know, I think it's, it's a model we're used to. The question is, are we going further? Are we actually changing that model to improve well, the... I think we have to because now we're finding malware inside of firmware and we're getting yeah. hardware delivered to us that has like... It's not only that. I mean, it, we've done work which shows that it's very straightforward with a bunch of JavaScript to drop in the web page. And then from there, just brute force yeah. all your way down to SMM and stay there forever. And once you're there, you're, you own it. Yeah, but you can do that from the web. So it's not like your supply chain has to be compromised. Malware yes. can do this from the web, get down through the OS, and drop into SMM, and then you're toast. So it's a, it's a big deal. It's, it's a scary a, world. Yeah. It's a scary world out there, but how do you, if, if I don't know that's happening, how do I protect myself? I mean, I don't want an untrusted platform anymore. I really don't. I want a trusted platform. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. but even if you have a trusted platform, that's not going to absolve you. Everyone wants the security easy button. Everyone wants the silver bullet. But security isn't an action. Security is a practice. Yeah. Right? And you can't just say, okay, bang, that covers me for all security. Because it's, it's a layered, just, it's a, that's it's true, but, but unless you're Simon, then, then no, no, all no. you need <laughs> is him. Yes, you do. All you need that's is Simon. true. That you're absolutely right. That However, you need him. With, with <laughs> the danger there is that it sounds like a, jet, a get out of jail free card to the which, person yeah. who's been buying the same old useless yeah. stuff for years, which doesn't work. So I'm not prepared to let people get out of jail on that one. You don't, I mean, this traditional stuff just doesn't work and there are better ways of achieving security by design. Yes. And I think, so hardening guide is good, but in general, you know, I divide the security world into two categories of vendors. Vendors who are building stuff that makes the world more secure, and vendors who bleat about what they think is bad, okay? All, of this, all three here are vendors that try and make the world more secure by design. That's just a much better way to go. Yep. Yes. And what you see emerging, I think, across all of the major infrastructure vendors is a set of ways, most of which use virtualization, surprisingly, to make the infrastructure vastly more defensible. And it's time to get rid of all the old crap that is sitting in the network, sitting on the endpoint, because it doesn't help. Yep. Just doesn't help. So when we talk about, I mean, going back, something actionable. Can people, do you, is TPM, TXT, and the follow-ons that are actually in all the processors, is those good enough to, to 
attest my hardware now, even yeah, it's with getting the attest with, Well, certainly with TPM 2.0, you can get to remote attestation. Yep. And, okay. But the problem is that there are no devices really shipping with TPM 2.0 yet. So that, look, in the endpoint world, hardware-based security comes slowly. It yes. comes slowly because there's this vast array of different hardware out there. And, and, and the it OEMs... Takes a, it takes a long time to design all that stuff, too. Well, but, it's, well it's, it's... Yes, and assuming that it, the current generation of hardware is great, it still takes a long time for that to filter into the enterprise. Yes. Yeah. By the way, Intel was not our friend here for a while. Intel charged 25 bucks more for a vPro feature set, which was just... Unforgivable. You know, <laughs> Why the hell do they do that? I mean, it's like just get people the most secure stuff possible, please, right? Well, um, so, in, so they're now doing the right thing. Yeah. From Skylake onward, it gets better. Well, in some of the sort of OEMs, right, where you know Cisco, HP, Dell, almost all of them have lease hardware that is TXT TPM enabled now, but it's you have to order, so it's a further line yeah. item. And I think Cisco's the only one that's decided that their ECS going forward, all their blades are going to have TPM TXT because they yep. don't want to go retrofit well, those. Well, only in the U.S. Oh, so there you go, only in the U.S. So again, you know, if we're trying to seed the market with the right approach, none of the hardware vendors, right, from the processors to the OEMs, right, are actually enabling the automatic right. choice. Right, they've, they've all made it way complicated. And yes. ultimately, it's way hard for the customer to figure out what to do. Yeah. That's the challenge. So we need yeah. to make, we need, the hardware vendors need to actually make it easy. Yeah. They, make, they need to make it easy, but ultimately, the hardware features just get, just get consumed in a software stack. And so ultimately, that's what the customer buys and needs to know is good, right? Yeah. Yes. So yeah. again. But we've, but we've even seen situations where the hardware has failed, right? So. While and the BIOS is a terrible. And the BIOS is a terrible, <laughs> and there's, there's so many moving yeah. pieces yeah. here. And so rather than getting to the point of, what I'm afraid of is that people are going to be listening and hear the point solution of, oh, I've got to have TPM 2.0. That'll solve my problem. Yeah, well, and I agree. Really, it's, it's much more along the lines of having a solid security practice yes. that gets you that allows you to take care of the unforeseen. Yes, and, and, I agree. and allows you to adopt the right technologies at the right time in the right place, yep. yeah. and also retire the old technologies at the right time in the yes. right place. Yeah. I absolutely and if you agree. don't yeah. do that, if you're just looking for a make it secure, then you're not hiring a security officer, you're hiring, hiring a compliance officer. And there's a, no, lot you're to, absolutely right. there's a lot to do with maturity too. So we have a number of customers that actually have enabled their infrastructure with TPM, TXT enabled hardware. But what's interesting is that they do a measured launch, right? So they're still allowing the launch to take continue even if the measurements are not in compliance to what they want, right? Mm -hmm. right? They're not saying don't stop booting if the bits are not right, they're like, let me know. I just want to detect if the bits are not right. Yeah, but even then so, you, can get, you, know, you can do a measured launch into something where the malware then is the first thing to come up after mm -hmm. you've done your malware, measured launch, and you know, then you're still stuck, right? Exactly. So my, my, exactly. my issue with measured launch mm -hmm. is the two words, measure, launch. <laughs> so only measured at launch time. Yes. And when you have up times of 30, 60, 80 days slash months, oh, you're right. then I'm sorry. At, at some point, that, that, that launch measurement gets stale. stale. I'm that's sorry. Right. If you have uptimes of greater than... Uh, a, that's a whole other issue, and I'll address is, that in my session later. Well, I'm going to address <laughs> it right now. That is not a badge of honor. Right. That is a, that is a really just don't do it. You've got to upgrade these machines, upgrade the firmware, the software, the hard, any, you got to upgrade the software pretty easily, at least with the security patches, folks. I know, but with virtualization, you can easily evacuate all the exactly. VMs exactly. and reboot more often. But I mean, you can. That's well, what visualization is allowing you to do, but nobody wants to. That's right. right. So, uh, you know, if well, we, I do if we, mine every quarter, if we, at minimally. Yeah, yeah, but nobody, and nobody's more like often. I mean, you, you're you know, in the extreme. You're in the extreme <laughs> category. We, with that, we knew that coming in here. <laughs> <laughs> but this is we'll know it coming out. <laughs> Come on, I'm going to practice. Yeah. I practice what I, I talk about. Yeah. Yes, and preach. And the thing is, is that I mean, I run a lot of products in my environment. Yeah. A lot of run a lot of security and management mm -hmm. products. And I do role-based access controls properly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Most people don't. These are the, the simple things people can fix without costing anything. So here's another one. Here's another simple one. So 90% of enterprise breaches start with a compromised endpoint, right? Yeah. PC yeah. or whatever. Mm -hmm. So simple one. Move distrust every PC in your org. Yeah. Move it outside. Don't trust the damn things. Put them on a separate line of business. That, that'll continue. 
Move it out, right? Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. They, but it will, because if I don't trust anything outside of my trusted component, and top, best desktops, why trust them anyways? Yeah. So you're not advocating VDI, are you? No. <laughs> <laughs> I, just I mean, we're v going back to a very I, long conversation. I love the, I love years the VDI ago. thing, which is that, yeah, I mean, it's most, a lot of malware I see just lives on the user profile and comes back every time you reboot your VDI desktop. <laughs> and then it loves being in the, in the data center too, right? Right. Mm -hmm. And being on the same VLAN as all the other VMs, which, you know, it can use to bounce around. So, you know, the VDI doesn't solve a security problem. It also solves a compliance problem. It's you know, better hygiene. It doesn't solve the patching or any other problem. But you you, know. No, it does. But you need to, you said the right word. You need hygiene. Yeah. You need to be able to think about your environment, whether it's a server, a cloud, a hybrid cloud, holistically. You can't just look at it as a point solution. It's like, oh, I got an iPad. I better do, I yeah. better secure it. No, it's like from here to where it's going, where it's talking. Figure out what your users are doing. Once and you know that, then you can figure out a exactly. policy around it to say what should they be allowed to do. Yeah, but also what can I do to mitigate the fact that I know that humans are going to be doing stupid things. And whether they're admins or just ordinary or users. Or accidental. I mean, classic <laughs> one that I've seen recently, you know, admin, user logs on as admin to administer Windows Server instance and then decides to browse the web. Bap. Yep. With admin credentials, right? Mm -hmm. so yeah. like toast, right? On the same system. Come on, so, I really like doing that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I use it in a capture VM. You throw away the VM every exactly. <laughs> Throw away everything, yeah. yeah. Take so, that laptop, get away with it. So I've been, I've been presenting at VMworld now for a couple of years, and what I'm finding my role has, is, has turned into is one of educating yeah. the VI admins on how to just step back and think of what their actions may have as far as a consequence mm -hmm. goes. Yes. And that uh, what I've also found mm. is uh, you know, I did last year a, a session on hypervisor security, and I had 500 people in the room. If I had done that session in 2010, I would have had 10 or 15 people in the room. Well, yeah. but, so what's happening is that the security industry and the security <clears throat> professionals are now starting to come out of their post 9/11 bunker, and they're looking around and realizing that the whole infrastructure has changed, yes. and now they're worried about it, about it being secure. And I think that then puts the onus on the IT admin to be coming up with better security practices and then educating the, the security folks on how, how these practices then affect security. Well, because so the, the security guy is just looking to, you know. Well, I'm also seeing in the industry, given the recent data breaches, right, that there is a mandates coming from the top. So like I was talking to a major insurance company just over lunch the other day and they were like, we've got this requirement that says encrypt everything. Yep. And you know, it's like Brute force approach. no new budget, just encrypt everything, right? That's like coming up from top down because the CIOs, the CISOs. But that CISOs. doesn't solve the problem. Right. Well, so it, now it, it says encrypt everything, but it doesn't say how do you manage the keys. Or, or, <laughs> right. or where, where's the right level to encrypt, right? right. Or so, given that you're going to encrypt everything, how are users going to get access to the data? And when it's decrypted, exactly. then and the bad guy shows so up. Right? It's, it's about the use case and the threat surfaces, right. right? It can't be about just encrypt because, you know, because the, the suggestion was storage level. And they're like, well, my facility is very tightly. Nobody's going to walk out with a drive from my storage system, right? So if I encrypt at that level, is it really going to solve my problem? Well, in, the right. in the virtual environment, even mm -hmm. most cloud environments, you, you can encrypt in 10 different locations, and they still encrypt at the storage level. So you know, encrypt everything. I've never been a fan of that. I, I actually think it's a waste of resources. Some things just need to be digitally signed. Some things you don't care about. Yeah. So, I think that whoever said that on high needs well, to be no, educated. But, <laughs> no, 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 but this is the mindset that the yes. C level. But wait, it's, it's, a little bit this, it's a little bit like the HTTPS everywhere mindset. Yes, right? yes. Which of course serves a bunch of hardware vendors mm. extremely well, <laughs> right? <laughs> Netscalers and F5s, oh, they love this stuff. Yes. So all the people who got big hardware. Oh, and the CERT management. <laughs> the, whole, the whole thing around encryption is all about data leakage, mm -hmm. yeah. right? So it's a brute force approach to solving the problem of data leakage. Yeah. But data leakage, if, if I'm someone with access rights to sensitive data that I bring up on the screen, oh, I can't take it out of the building because it's encrypted. Ah, but I can take my phone out and take a photo of every single piece Sally. and have that synced up to a cloud service in <laughs> seconds. So it doesn't really address the problem of data leakage. Yeah. That's really an education of the end user. Sally. And what we're looking, Encryption is stop stupid. 
I would right? agree with that. The, the, yeah. the guy who pulls out the, the, the disk drives and goes and sells them down at the, mm -hmm. or you the, know. Or the people that are supposed to dispose of the drive, you send it back to the manufacturer. They exactly. send it over to Africa to pick apart. But before it, it, they do that, they read it. Exactly. <laughs> so that's what those policies are there for. Uh, they're really to, to stop that. But at the end of the day, if someone is determined enough they will get past a lot of those things. And yeah. that's when you really ought to so be thinking about... you're just raising the bar, right? You're making it harder for them. Yes, absolutely. Rather than just, it's in the so, clear and they but, can just but take at the it. End, but at the end of the day, when something like that happens, yep. and you have a breach or you have data leakage, you really have to have a disaster recovery plan for security in place to deal with well, the that's outcome. What, and that's what I was going to get to is, you really need to have those plans, a library of them, <laughs> all those incident responses, for everything. It's not just disaster recovery, it's an instant response for a breach. It's an instant yeah. response yep. for an encryption key mm -hmm. missing. It's an instant response for, you know, someone couldn't unlock their laptop for whatever reason. Well, someone's inconvenience is another person's disaster, so I'll just stick with disaster recovery. Okay. <laughs> it's a disaster. <laughs> it's a disaster, oh my God. <laughs> but you need a library of instant responses. There's a point at which some of this stuff risks risk becoming too complex for, you know, an, an organization which gets IT, but not a lot of it, right? Yeah. So, I mean, it's easy, <clears throat> it's easy to talk to mature security organizations, and they get it. Yes. But the mid-market guy who's, you know, under-resourced in IT anyway, and IT is not the business, for him, this is a lot of work. It's, it's a, a huge lot amount. Of work. But that's, I mean, that's why maybe what needs to happen is instant responses need to be shared and made available so people have a library to go to. Okay, we're thinking of another product for somebody else to make. Um, but still, I think you're right. It's, it's, it, but it's not but it's just... Sure. It's a difficult problem to solve, right? So there's the process by which you can address an incident and you can have a supply chain of vendors that can help you with yes. the mitigation piece of it. But that awareness and training piece, which is a challenge even just with the, you know, even today in the basic, don't click this, right? that piece becomes even more complicated. Well, so, so if you it's know, a I mean, I think the business of don't click on stuff, uh, honestly, I think that that one is, I mean, that there are lots of ways to solve, solve that problem, but it's, I mean, I, I think it's in the category of solved, okay? That is, we know how to make operating systems extraordinarily secure nowadays. The problem is the legacy. Yeah. Okay, so, you know, number one thing is, you know, just move on, people. <laughs> move on, right? Move on, move on, move on. It's like when you I move on and use something you guys created. So <laughs> I had this meeting. With, I had this meeting with the CISO of the Federal Reserve Bank, right? Bloody Windows XP everywhere, you know. And the first thing he says, guys, you are completely unlike every other financial services organization. By the way, you're supposed to be the leader, mm -hmm. you know. What the hell are you doing still on Windows XP? You know, just move on. Yeah. And and then the world gets better. Same with the U.S. Navy. It's just like, why the hell do I even know that the U.S. Navy has Windows XP? That's a vulnerability in itself. <laughs> okay. Well, okay. It's been actually a pleasure talking to everybody. We're almost done with our time. Wow. So a closing <laughs> thought from everybody. Hema? Well, so I, I'll build on what Simon said. Definitely deploy the new emerging technologies and actually adopt it because it will make them safer and more secure. I mean, for me, you're vastly more secure if you use virtualization and if you use the cloud. Just get there, right? Humans tripping on Ethernet cables, bad idea, right? Just get out of physical infrastructure, and the same stuff is coming on the client. You know, you, um, you know virtualization is about to transform the security of endpoints, and it's all going to be much better. Just move forward. Faster. You know, quit, quit resisting change. Mm -hmm. That's number one. And then I agree with this key requirement, you know, get planned for the bad things. So I guess I would say um, when, you've, when you're adopting all of these new technologies that we want you to move to, don't apply the same old rules. Because mm -hmm. if you apply the same old rules to the new technology, you're not going to reap the benefits of the ROI of that new yeah, technology. Yes. If you're just applying new technology just to say, we're running virtualized, that's not going to help you. You really need to sit That's back right. and understand the impact to the business that new, that new technology is going to have, and your rules may change. 
Well, and the, 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 my last thought is uh, this all is going to start. I mean, Mike and I were on a, t a panel one time and someone got up and asked, like, where does everything stop? Without, start. And without even looking at each other, we said, with architecture. If you're going to sit there and adopt a new technology, come up with an architecture, please. Sit yes. there and at least think about how security is going to be impacted by those and change how you're looking at security to fit that environment. You, I mean, the stuff we're talking about encrypt, encrypt everything, it may not actually be worth doing. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. It may actually have such a high overhead because of what you have yeah. that mm -hmm. you may be adopting the wrong platform. Yeah. There's a whole lot of factors here that we're not thinking about today as we go forward. I think that's the key is you've got to start thinking about them at the beginning in mm -hmm. as you move. You can't just say, oh, I moved. and Oh, let's go bolt on some security. It's like, yeah. uh, no. Think yeah, about it, think about security, and then move forward. Yeah. yeah. So I, the, yeah. Oh, it's almost like, you know, the, the empowered CISO is the way forward. An empowered, sophisticated, architecturally sensitive CISO is the way forward, right? And the CISO for too long has been, you know, subordinate to the CIO and everything yeah. else. Well, they've also you know, been reactive, security first. dealing with compliance. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, they've been reactive. You've got to break out of the right. reactive they're not brought in, on later. They're not brought in at the design time. Yeah. 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 So get out, break out of the reactive mode. Yep. But I think it's also the responsibility of the CISOs, the security engineering teams, to actually take a more active role. They can't just be focused on the ongoing maintenance of what they've already deployed, but actually spend the time with the business units and, and say, and, what are you doing? And, yeah. and my, my big complaint yeah. about security teams is they need to get ahead of the exactly. technology changes yes. and not react to the technology mm -hmm. changes. Yes. A perfect example would be things like Dropbox, yep. right? If yes. you can't provide an alternative solution that custom, that your customers, your, your employees your use, yeah. can use that works just like a Dropbox, for example, mm -hmm. If you make it really, really hard for them, they're just going to go around you. Yep. Oh, absolutely. Now, right now, I think the final thought is that, let's tie it back to VMworld a little bit, mm -hmm. is that security professionals now have a chance to really get ahead by looking at the Photon platform and tools like that, because now you've got something that is not in every data center. You've got a chance to think and plan around it. Yeah. And architect how it's going to move into your environment and be part, the, the security folks just have to be part of the discussion. Yes. Get there. Yeah, yeah well, I mean, if you're, if you're a CIO, the message is let the security people lead from an architectural perspective. Yes. And don't try and call them in later and say, hey, we're about to do this, how are you going to scare it? And Where allocate are you going to put the, the firewall? Allocate <laughs> the budget as well, right? So not just design an architect, but allow right. the budget to be there for the security and compliance controls yeah, that exactly. are necessary. Well, thank you, Hema, Simon, Mike, for being Pleasure. on the Virtualization thank you. Thank you. Security thank you. and Cloud Podcast.